Hey, welcome to Hear God's Word. This is Michael Weinger. In this podcast, we study and dissect the Bible to better understand what it means and is trying to say. We'll cover theology and dig into the original meaning through language and word studies. We'll even discuss scientific and historical ties, but we'll always come back to the basics. There's so many layers to the Bible, and it's all important. So, if you want to hear what God has to say, then let's dive in. Hey, everyone. So, this week we're going to have two episodes, and we're going to be splitting what we're talking about into different episodes because of the fact that even though there's a somewhat similar theme that kind of keeps going, there's actually a punctuation and section marker that occurs at the end of chapter four, and we only have two verses left of chapter four. So almost all the way to chapter 5 already in Genesis. So although we've been trudging along slowly, we've also made quite a bit of progress getting through four chapters of deeply understanding the very beginning of the Bible is pretty big, but we have some even more big concepts to go over today, and they'll mainly be regarding going over some of the stuff we've talked about in the past, but in a new way. But we'll also be covering some new words, and we're also going to introduce a new person again into the family of humanity. So, with that... We're going to start off with Genesis 4.25 and read the last two verses. So it says, And Adam was intimate with his wife again, and she gave birth to a son. She named him Seth, saying, God has given me another child in place of Abel because Cain killed him. And a son was born to Seth, whom he named Enosh. At that time, people began to worship the Lord. And to already start commenting, the word the Lord is referring to and actually has the name of God, the YHWH or Yahweh or Jehovah. and. Again, as I've mentioned in the past, we still are not 100% sure on the pronunciation since the Jews wanted to purposely not use the name because of how holy God's name is. It's so set apart that they didn't even want to take the chance of using it or misusing it or butchering it. And so they started to use terms like the Lord or the name and things of that sort. So that's why a lot of English Bibles just use capital L, capital O, R, D. And so with that, it's making that emphasis that they are not just calling on on a Lord or the Lord, but they're calling on Yahweh, the specific God who made everything, the God who this whole book is about, the one who's weaving the story. So he's the one who created them, and it's kind of ironic. It says that that's when they started to call on the name of the Lord. So were Adam and Eve and Cain and all of the people that lived in those first few generations not calling on the name of the Lord. And obviously we see lots of 
sin, even if it's just two examples with Adam and Cain, and then also these people trying to kill one of the great grandchildren of Cain uh, being Lamech. So we have obviously lots of issues in the world and I don't know if this was the first time that people were truly seeking and acknowledging God for the first time since the fall. You know, were Adam and Eve actually close to God and in communication with him? I mean, I think it seems like they might have been, but technically it actually doesn't even mention that. It doesn't try emphasizing that in the story because basically the point of Genesis 2 and 3 is talking about how there was basically no time that was really positive for the people except for when God first made it. And once he put the man and the woman to work in the garden, they almost immediately messed things up. There's almost no pause in the story before they're already screwing things up. And so this may have been the first generation which it was not their son Seth directly, but Seth's son, specifically Enosh, who it seems like once he hit the scene, that he was really the first person to genuinely really seek after God, especially since the fall. So now let's back up Basically, we're going a little bit backwards again, and we're going to go even more backwards again in the next episode, because in a way, it's uh, about to have another reset, and I know we talked about that several times towards the beginning of creation, so we're going to have something similar to that again. but. Let's finish up chapter four. So it says Adam was intimate with his wife again. So this is the third recorded son, but still only now their second son. And it goes the extra mile to mention that he was in place of Abel. So I could imagine the conversation with Adam and Eve going like, hey, you know, we lost our son. It's been a little bit. You want to try for another one? And I know we can't ever replace Abel, but, you know, maybe we can have another kid to fill that space. So maybe they also wanted a son that was. Also, maybe not going to end up as problematic and maybe sticking at home, especially since Cain was off doing his own stuff. And um, who knows if, like we talked about earlier, they kicked him out and that was part of the reason why he was wandering. And obviously he didn't fully wander because he settled down and started building a city named after his son, but it is what it is, and we'll see if that has any sort of implications in the future. So here we got Seth, who is the, I guess you can say, replacement son for Abel, because if you remember, Abel was a good son in the sense that he did what was acceptable and did what was honorable to God when he offered his sacrifice. 
if we go based off of that, obviously God saw Abel at least as a much more honorable man, and Cain did what was much less honorable. So is Seth going to follow in the path of Abel or Cain, or is he just going to tread some totally other direction? But I think we can see that even just by Seth's son, we can already see maybe a positive pattern starting to happen. And we'll talk more about children and their outcome reflecting on the previous and also future generations. So we'll get back to that in a second. But I wanted to also take a minute to point out Seth's name. In Hebrew, it means to set or to place. And so not only did Adam and Eve place and set a new son in place, but also it goes to show how God assigned or set them up with a new son in the place of Abel. And so I was also going to mention one other name that I hadn't talked about earlier, and it just goes especially to show how a lot of the names in the Bible have meaning to them, and they're not just random letters put together. So the name Cain doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot, but at the same time, it is similar to the word create in Hebrew. So if we look in chapter four at the beginning, it talks about how when Eve got pregnant and gave birth to Cain, she said, I've created. And then if you look up, it's kind of ironic because the word for made or gave birth or created, at least in this sense, is the word kaniti. And so you can kind of see the Cain or the Cain part that is in there. And so even when a name doesn't necessarily have kind of like uh, English, where sometimes some of the names we have we don't know where the stem actually came from. Maybe they originally did have a meeting, but a lot of times they sound like something else. And that's the case here where Cain's name is more like a synonym reminding you of a different word when you hear that name. So basically... This is going to ring true for a lot of names, and obviously not all of them are meant to be looked into that deeply, but at the same time, they can be, and you can get a lot out of these things. So Eve was obviously really thankful and proud that that was the first time anyone had ever created life and made. So this was the first human creation of another human like god had created humans which he used a different word actually for that when god created the people it uses the word baga but here it uses kaniti so even though there are different terms, they're basically synonyms, kind of like we have created and made. Basically, the same sort of thing. Every language has multiple ways to say something similar. And so jumping back now that we've talked a little bit about names, we got Cain, we have Seth now, and now they're the two siblings, but it, 
I'm not sure exactly how far apart in age they were when Seth was born. And it'll give us uh, maybe a little bit of hints in the next chapter. But as of for now, let's just remember that Seth, that he was like the replacement child for his brother Abel. And like we were talking about now getting into forecasting and foreshadowing how someone's child kind of reflected on that parent and also how that parent kind of foreshadowed what the children would be like. You know, if you think about it, it's even true nowadays, not all the time, obviously, many times, you know, kids can go astray like Cain, Abel, they were very different people. They both showed different characteristics in their parents, but obviously Cain took a lot after his parents in one sense where he was pretty rebellious, pretty close to right away in the story. Whereas it was talking about how Abel was holding out doing good. And so here we have Seth and it doesn't really say much about him besides just his name and that Eve again said something when giving birth and she said, God has given me another child in place of Abel. So the fact that God has given or placed or set her up with a new child that filled at least a little bit of a gap that had probably been missing ever since missing Abel. And so going from there, we have Seth giving birth to his son Enosh. And again, all of these people probably had other children, but just a reminder that many times it only mentions one of the prominent males that were born into that family. And sometimes it mentions the wife occasionally. And sometimes it mentions multiple siblings if they play a significant role in the story. So you'll see this as time goes throughout. And We'll also see, you know, some significant things that can come, like we talked about in genealogies last week of Cain's family tree, that, you know, if there's a prominent person for some reason, like one person founds music, you know, that's a pretty significant invention. And so obviously he's going to have his name remembered even just like today you know we remember people in the history books for people who invented things and they got their name put on not only the things that they passed down and got carried even sometimes on to us but also just even their names in the history books being passed down this is the same thing. These people are the people who are getting their names passed down in the history books, or at least at that time, at minimum, by verbal communication and stories. And they would most likely, I'm sure back then, tell their children about who their ancestors were. And at that time, We'll see in just a little bit, but I'll tell you that Adam is still alive even several, several generations into his great-great-grandchildren. So we'll talk about that next time. But I wanted to leave off again one more time with talking about it saying, at that time, people began to worship the Lord. 
So when it says they began to worship the Lord, the actual terminology that's used in Hebrew is they began to call on the name of Yahweh. So the question is, is is that when they first began learning of Yahweh's name and calling him that? Or is that just stating that even if they still didn't know or have the name Yahweh for God, that at least they knew who Yahweh was and they called him God? Or many of the traditions and other writings, and even in the Bible, there's evidence that points to people calling God, God Almighty, or God Most High. So the term El Shaddai, El meaning God, and Shaddai mean like high or elevated or essentially almighty or all powerful this is most likely what people say is the earliest terms but who's to say that they actually didn't learn god's name at one point and then that got lost at some point who's to say that enosh and his people and siblings and children and all of that didn't actually learn God's name and begin to call on him, Yahweh. And also one other minor thing, and uh, this is sometimes why the Bible can be so complicated. Sometimes they'll use words that basically tell the future readers information that the people back then wouldn't have known. So, for example, kind of like a movie, you know, when you're watching a movie or reading a book, you get all of this terminology that helps you understand. Or, for example, you know, if we're reading a book, for example, on Rome, but then they say in Italy today, blah, 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 you know, we know exactly what that means. But the people of the early Roman Empire, if you said, hey, you live in Italy, they would have been like, what? What's that? (laughs) So they were in Italy, but it wasn't called that exactly yet. But technically they were, but technically they weren't. So in the same way, some people say that they didn't know the actual name Yahweh, even though they were calling to him and on his name, because As I mentioned earlier, one of the names for God is the name. So if they're calling on the name, even though they don't know the name of the name, they can still be calling on the name of the Lord. So hopefully that made sense and gave you something interesting to think about. But the thing that's most important, you can't go away with just trying to get only the intellectual stuff. The most important thing is the fact that they did begin to call on Yahweh. And it seems like it was for real and it was actually honest and heartfelt and sincere when these people started calling on him. It didn't say here what they did that lined up with that, but the fact that it seems like there's a new generation beginning to spring up and maybe this family that comes from Enosh is going to be the one that's going to carry on and start transforming 
society for the better because we've had a few negative stories now. So is it going to get better? We'll just have to keep reading as usual. Hey, I'm so glad you guys could join for today's podcast. I hope things clicked for you and that you're able to better understand God's word. Jesus said, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. So keep on listening to what God has to say, and I'll see you guys next time. God bless.